What's up YouTube, Del here from Zephyr War Games, and today I am bringing you a Vanquish Soul featuring Fenrir Profile. Now this deck is actually really, really fun, very powerful. The biggest issue with it is because Konami gave it seven Ultras in one set, it's quite expensive. Um, I was lucky enough to pick up some of this in trade, and I'm now kind of working around with different versions, different variants of this deck, and it's so good because it can pretty much be utilized in any fire, earth, and dark deck that can kind of multiply around and be used in synergy. So with all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more upcoming content. So what I've done here is I've split these out. I'm gonna do deck profile a little bit differently. So I've got fire, earth and dark and I'm gonna show you all of those monsters that I'm using because each of them contain the vanquished soul card and then a hand trap element. Um, the best thing about these is you can reveal any earth, fire, dark in their effects in order to get the secondary effects of the vanquished souls. So to help this out a little bit better, let's start off with the best card of the deck, and that is Vanquish Soul Raisin. Now, Raisin is on normal or special summon. You get to add a non-warrior Vanquish Soul monster from the deck to the hand. Now, the best thing about that is while this deck can play Tikaboo, it's for the pure fact that they are so many different types. There's not one monster that shares the same type, including the Link one from the extra deck. They then all have a secondary effect, which is a quick effect, where you reveal either a couple of attributes, a single attribute or a double attribute, and get an additional effect. So, for example, in Ryzen's case, if you reveal a fire in the hand, this card cannot be destroyed by card effect this turn. If you reveal a fire and a dark, you destroy all other monsters in this card's column. You can only use each effect once per turn and cannot activate more than one in the same chain. Now what this basically means, there's been a little bit of confusion, but the idea is the first effect, or the two effects it's referring to is the summon effect and then the reveal effect, which is basically highlighted by the bullet points. So what that means is you can't normal summon Ryzen and then go chain link one Ryzen's effect to search, chain link two second effect to pop, for example. You can't do that. What you can do is you can normal summon Ryzen, use the effect, search out whatever monster you want, and then on a new chain you can go effect, activate to reveal a fire or a fire in the dark, and resolve that secondary effect. Now you can't get both effects, which means I can't reveal a fire, make this can't be destroyed by effects this turn, and then in the same turn reveal fire and dark, I have to do one or the other. So it's got a very nice defensive option or an aggressive option, you just can't use both in the same turn. We then play the one Vanquish Soul Pluton HG. Now, the fire is the only one that doesn't have a tag out effect monster. And what I mean by that is for Earth, they've got Caesar. For Dark, they've got Borga. And basically they are quick effects to target a Vanquish Soul monster on the field that isn't of the same type, so Machine and Dragon. Return it to the hand, and if you do, you special that boss monster down. Now at the moment, Vanquish Souls don't have that for the fire. What they do have is they have a monster that during your opponent's turn, if you control no monsters or only Vanquish Soul monsters, you can special summon this card as a quick effect. Now, it's only while you control no van um, only Vanquish Soul monsters in your main monster zone. So technically you can have anything in your extra monster zone and still summon this guy down. It has the effect to reveal a fire and gain either 3000 defense, or reveal a dark and an earth and gain 3000 attack. Now the reason this is so good is because you've got the quick effects of stuff like Borga and Caesar that allow you to target any non-machine or non-dragon in their example, Vanquish Soul Monster on the field and return it to the hand. So it means in theory what you're trying to do is during your opponent's turn, turn zero, you can actually summon down a Caesar and Caesar will give you the ability to non-target destroy it one card on the field by revealing a fire, earth and dark monster. Note that all the Vanquish Souls re say reveal a attribute monster, they don't say reveal an attribute Vanquish Soul, which is why this deck can abuse other cards to no end. So the other cards that are the best for this is, is like Hand Traps and Kaijus. So the other fire monsters that we use in the uh, deck, and I've got nine fires, nine darks, and eight earths, is we play with two Karakora and two Ash, because you've got a go first hand trap and a go second hand trap. Very easily, the Karakoras can become Dograns, and Dogran is probably the best Kaiju for you, and that will make more sense when we get to Mad Love, because Mad Love has an effect, as a quick effect, to return one monster on the field with the lowest defense, and the reason the Kaiju is so good is it's the lowest defense Kaiju being 1200, and the fact is a fire can very easily replace one of these hand traps, depending on if you want to go all gas go second, or all gas go first and balance. The best thing about that is by returning the Kaiju, you can still Kaiju again as long as they don't control a Kaiju, which is really, really cool. 
So then the last monster we play for the fires is the Rise Heart. Now this is only in here because we play Fenrir with the Earths. So not only can Fenrir search another Earth to be used as the reveal of the Earth attribute, but if you're missing the fire, it can also search you out the Rise Heart. On top of that as well, through a combo that I'll show you at the end, Rise Heart can also be used along with um, Borga, because Borga is a level seven, to make you a Rise Heart, which is really, really kind of cool. So that's it for the fire lineup. Like I said, the Kaiju of choice will be Dogaran if you don't want to go as heavy on some of the hand traps. Moving on to the dark. So again, the dark have um, nine representations, but there's just three different cards, which is really, really nice. So we play triple Dr. Mad Love. Now this is the card that on normal or special lets you add a Vanquish Soul spell or trap. Now, I really wish this card was called Stake Your Vanquish Soul because then it would have been searchable, but then it would have been a little bit broken. So the two cards you are going to be searching off of Dr. Mad Love as it currently stands is the Vanquish Soul Continue, which is very good because it's basically like that end scene of like Mortal Kombat when you've been um, fatalityed and it's like coming back for another turn. So this one you pay 500 life points, which again, as a game, when you click continue, you're paying a life or you used to put like another pound or another quarter in to get the game to go again. You target a Vanquish Soul monster in your graveyard and either add it to the hand or special summon it. The reason that's so good is you can add back the bounce back cards of Borgar or Caesar, or you can revive your Dr. Mad Love or ideally your Ryzen to set you up with effects during your opponent's turn. You then play the Vanquish Soul Dust Devil. Now I really like this card because it's like a Book of Eclipse um, as long as you have multiple Vanquish Soul monsters on the board. So both of these are quick effects. This one is target a Vanquish Soul monster you control, change its battle position. So as long as you control a Vanquish Soul monster apart from the rock, because obviously it can't change battle position, um, you will then get the ability to change that face up, um, change that battle position, and then you get to change non-target face up monsters your opponent controls to face down defense position up to number of Vanquish Soul monsters you control with different names. And that is actually really easy um, to get at least two Vanquish Souls to the board from one card. So this is going to become a double book non-target. Really, really kind of cool. Uh, and then the bounce out card is the Heavy Burger. Now I keep saying Burger, but it's not, it's Burger, which is quite funny. Um, so this is the level seven, so this can help you get into Rise Heart if you want to. This is the quick effect that during the main phase, very important, you target a non-machine Vanquish Soul monster you control, return it to the hand, and if you do, special on this card. You then get the ability to reveal a Dark or an Earth and Fire. So if you reveal a Dark, you draw one card. Nice, three plus. If you reveal an Earth and Fire, you inflict 1500 damage to your opponent. So this card straight away, during your turn, as long as you choose not to draw, and during your opponent's turn, you choose not to draw, you could burn your opponent for 3000 damage. It's like Long One and Gal um, Gal 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 Cowboy Who? Uh, I did skip over the Dr. Mad Love effect because I kept going over about the spell. But Dr. Mad Love is reveal a Dark. One face on monster on uh, your opponent controls loses 500 attack. If you reveal a Dark and an Earth, return non-target, the monster, one monster on the field with the lowest defense um, back to the hand, your choice if tied. So the fact that she's a 2K booty herself is very easy to bounce back something like um, Dogaran. The last card that we play in the dark section is of course Triple D Shifter. Now if you want to be very aggressive, you can go for the Raiden, but the issue with the Raiden, it's got a very fat booty of 2,500, um, but you'll just be using it as a normal Kaiju anyway and not worry about bouncing it back, which is why I'm saying Dogaran is your best option um, because it's the only one that fits an attribute that has really weak defense. But if you're like, okay, cool, Shifter's not working for me. I want a Kaiju that's also a dark, you can go with this. Or the other one is you can go for a Ghost Reaper because you're already playing Rise Heart. If your locals is like full on cash and Shifter's not going to do anything for you, then a Reaper just to rip out their Rise Hearts, their big eyes, everything like that is going to be great. And the mirror match, pretty funny. Um, so yeah, Triple D Shifter. Moving on to the Earths. So the Earths is the one that has the lowest representation. The Fire has four Vanquish Souls, the Darks have six, and the Earths have three. Um, you can technically play more if you want to, but these are probably like the worst. Well, not Caesar. Caesar's pretty good, but they're like, you don't want to clog on them. So you've got Pantera. Now Pantera is if you control no monsters in the main monster zone, you get to special on this card from the hand. I would have liked this to be the same as the zombie slime, which is basically like if you control no monsters or only control vanquished soul monsters or something like that, you can special summon her because then it would kind of signify to me that each attribute is going to get their return card. So Caesar and Borga. They would all get a summon if you control no monsters or only vanquished souls in Pantera and Zombie. And then you'd have your starters in the form of Dr. Mad Love, Ryzen, and then an Earth that could be normal summoned and search you out. Maybe a vanquished soul trap could have been really cool. 
Uh, anyway, your reveal on Earth, this card cannot be destroyed by battle this turn. It reminds me of Cosmo Wicked Witch, because you just put it in defense, reveal, can't be destroyed, and it's just like, ah, I can't get past it. Uh, and then the other one is you reveal Earth and Fire, destroy all spells and traps in the column. Now, unlike Ryzen, the, the reason that Ryzen's so good is for the pure fact that you can get most advantage from it by simply having your Rock of the Vanisher in uh, Vanquisher, sorry, in one extra monster zone, and you put Ryzen under the other one. Meaning that as soon as your opponent puts a monster in that zone, either they're not going to be able to use Link monsters because Ryzen will just go, cool, pop. Or if they get a little bit laxical and put a monster in that Link monster and one behind it, you can actually get a double pop of it, which is really good. And then Caesar is your best boss monster. Looks really cool. Love the artwork on this one. So during the main phase, quite like Borgo, you target a non-dragon Vanquish soul monster you control, return it to hand, and if you do, special summon this card. You reveal an Earth. This face-up card is unaffected by your opponent's activated effects this turn. If you reveal an Earth, Fire, and Dark, God, why couldn't it be Earth, Fire, and Wind? That'd have been funny. Um, destroy non-target one card in the field, which is why it's good. Like, if you get this and the zombie slime, you're going to get a free pop. Um, if you get the zombie slime plus your Borgar, you're going to get a free draw or a free burn for 15, which is kind of cool as well. And then this is where the Cash Tira comes in. So this is where you can play Triple Fenrir. For the pure fact that you summon down Fenrir, you've got a very good interruption and it replaces itself or can get you access to a fire. Um, some people do also play the Scareclaw Cash Tira if you want to as well. Very easily doable. I just feel that Fenrir is the best one because you're going to go Fenrir, search out Rise Heart. Rise Heart's going to banish another Fenrir or vice versa. Uh, and then the hand trap of choice is, of course, Ghost Bell. Um, purely because this is actually really good. So in the mirror match, it can deal with the Rock of the Vanquisher. It can deal with Cash Tier of Birth. Um, it can also deal with Runic as well. The Kaiju of choice for the Earth would, of course, be Sticky String Kaiju. But it's got a 2500 booty as well. So it's a little bit difficult. Like The idea is that with Dogran, the reason this is so good is because if you've got Ryzen on the board or Ryzen on the board, Ryzen only has 1500 defense. So even if you've got Ryzen and you've got Dr. Mad Love, this is still a legal target to bounce back. Whereas even with Dr. Mad Love, you can't bounce back either of these two because they've got 2,500 defense. So to me, if you're going for a Kaiju, Dogran's the one. If you're going for a Kaiju, maybe you need to upgrade those Dograns to secrets. Oh, big, big pain. So that's it for the monsters. Moving on to the spells. So I've already talked about um, Dust, Dust Devil and Continue. So the other one is Stake Your Soul. Now, I love the artwork on this one. As soon as I saw it, I was like, yo, this reminds me of like exactly what it needs to be, which is battle games. So you've got Pantera, and then you've got um, the Caesar on the left and right. Really, really cool artwork. You reveal one monster in your hand, any monster, and then you get to special summon a Vanquish Soul monster with the same attribute, but a different name from the deck. But return it to the hand during the end phase. Now, the reason this is so good is you reveal an Ash, you reveal a Dogran, you reveal a Karakura, you're getting instant access to your ideal one in the form of the Raisin. If you haven't got access to the Ryzen, you've also got the ability to reveal a Dark, and that will get you to the Dr. Mad Love. You've got access to your Borgar, you've got access to the Pantera, you've got access to the uh, Caesar, everything you need to. But the idea is you want to get to Raising, you want to get to Dr. Mad Love so that you can use stuff like Caesar and Borgar to return it to the hand. So you don't need to worry about the effect of this to bounce it back. That being said, if you are playing against Vanquish Souls, remember if they activate this, make a marker or something that is legal within the realms of the game. Like at locals, I'm like a lot of people are kind of happy to just go, okay, I'm just going to put a token on this or a dice on this to know that it's summoned off the stake your soul, which I think is fair enough. Uh, and then of course we've got Trill Pot Prosperity. Like apart from Rock of the Vanquisher and then a route into something like Zeus, your extra deck is completely flexible. Rota is basically your fourth horizon. And then the card that makes this deck just so annoying to deal with is Triple Tikaboo. Um, the fact that you play all different types. Like, even when you add the Kaijus in, the Kaijus are Insect. Fiend is the only one that clashes, but um, Insect and Dino, even though you're going to give it to your opponent, doesn't matter. But the idea behind this is you're playing so many different types. You're playing Zombies, Dragons, Warriors, Beast Warriors, Machines, Fiends. You name it, you're good to rock and roll. And the last two cards is Imperm. Um, this can be anything you want. I think at the moment... I'm hoping, at the very least, we get a water and we get a wind for future support because then that would be really kind of cool. Um, I don't know what they would do. Like, obviously, you've got Caesar and Borgar, so you've got a burn and you've got a pop. So I don't know how they'll kind of instigate, but it would be really kind of cool to add them to a deck. Um, and yeah, I, all it takes is this deck gets new support that's half decent again, and it will take another step up in price. It might not hit the level of the Pearlies, but still, you've got to be prepared. And then moving on to the extra deck, Rock of the Vanquisher. Now this is where it becomes an issue. Now what I mean by that is, um, now you've seen all of the Ultra Rares, you can see that the seven Ultra Rares are all used in the deck, and the worst thing about it, all bar two of them are used at free. 
The Pantera, one. Caesar, two. Everything else is at free. Dr. Mad Love, free. Stake Your Soul at free. Ryzen at free. Rock of Vanquisher at free. And Borgar at free. That's what makes this deck so expensive. If they got the treatment of the Dinos and only had one Ultra in the set, cheap as chips. If they had the treatment of the Hungry Burgers and only had two Ultras in the set, Still, relatively easy to get to because the max you'll be paying is only like £120 for those two. At the moment, you're playing like £75 for the Rock playset, you're playing like £75, if not more, for the playset of Borgar. Uh, like £50 for Borgar and then £75 for Ryzen. It just gets crazy, crazy. Anyway, Rock of Vanquisher. It requires specifically a Vanquish Soul, so it's not going to get splashed as a generic Link 1. Um, not that you'd want it to. Love the artwork on this one as well. It cannot be used as Link material at all. And then while you control a Vanquish Soul monster, your opponent's monsters can only target monsters you control with the highest attack, their choice if tied for attacks. During the main phase, quick effect, you can activate one of these effects. Special summon a Vanquish Soul monster from the hand, and a Vanquish Soul monster from your graveyard to the hand. So it's so good of recyclability, and then when you compare this or combo this off with stuff like your Cerberus and your Phoenix, more so your Phoenix, it just can't be destroyed by battle, and I have to try and get past Phoenix to then try and get rid of this, which is just so difficult. So for the Link 2s, we've got the one Donner, we've got the one Security Dragon, just very easy to co-link this for a bounce. This is to deal with stuff if your opponent's going to go ham and go for stuff like a uh, Baguska. And then of course you've got your Nightmare Cerberus, your Nightmare Phoenix, and your Nightmare Unicorn. Remember, co-linked, you're allowed to draw multiple cards during the draw phase. Co-linked monsters cannot be destroyed by card effects, co-linked monsters cannot be destroyed by battle. So it's very easy to kind of set this board up, to kind of slow lock your opponent, and heck, um, technically, I believe there's also ways of being able to U-Link because you'd go um, one uh, Rock of Vanquished, Nightmare Phoenix, Unicorn, Cerberus, Rock of Vanquished. Uh, and then, of course, Mac Daddy access code. Moving on to the rank fours, we've got the one Baguska if you do need to go into a grind slowdown game. Uh, the Chuck and Iron, Borbo, very easy to get you into Mac Daddy Zeus for a clearer. And then, of course, your rank sevens, you've got the one Big Eye and you've got the one Rise Heart. So very easy. Fenrir, and then Borgard gets you into Big Eye, Fenrir, Borgard, and Rise Heart gets you into Rise Heart. Uh, I'll show you that combo now. So basically, all you're going to need for this um, is, and you could go, you do need to get into either Stake Your Soul. Stake Your Soul is the better one because that lets you play around Nibiru, but you need to have an additional card in the hand. If you're not going to be playing around Nibiru, then the most easy way to get it to is a Raisin and, of course, your Fenrir. See how it would be is you special the Fen, use Fen's effect, which will search you out the Rise Heart. If you need an Earth, of course, you can go down that route. Entirely up to you. But you search out the Rise Heart. You normal summon the Raisin. Raisin's effect will then trigger. You're going to go for your Borgar. Now, obviously, if you have a Dark, you get a free draw. If you've got an Earth and a Fire, which you will do at least here, you can return the Rise into the hand, go down the Borgar. And if you've got an Earth, you reveal two, burn your opponent for 15. Nice. You can try a Cash Tira, so you can special summon down the Rise Heart. Rise Heart's effect to banish a Fenrir from the deck, giving it a nice level boost to sevens. You are locked into Lynx, and you go straight into Rise Heart. Now, if you wanted to rewind this a little bit, what gives you the best thing about it is if we go back to the Riser before we get locked. Um, if you're not worried about Nibiru and you want to push it that little bit more, you actually turn your Raisin into your Vanquished. You can then use Vanquished effect to then special summon down the Borgar. And then of course you can special summon down the Rise, uh, Rise Heart, Rise Heart's effect, make it level seven, overlay, overlay, overlay. And then what you're gaining from this is during your opponent's turn, you can actually use the Vanquisher to add the Rise and back to the hand set to go for the next turn. So then they've got to deal with a Rise Heart, which is gonna be able to detach, free, banish, and then keep stacking and stacking and stacking until it becomes a fat Zeus. You've also got the ability of go, okay, cool, Rock's effect, special summon down the Raisin um, during your turn if you want it to, or you're just going to hold this until your turn, normal summon this, Raisin's then going to get a Borgar, and you're then set again to go for another loop. So, very simple play, uh, but that's why the caches are really kind of cool. The only kind of like mini changes I'd be looking at making would be stuff like adding in Kaijus, and I think that's where it kind of comes down to it. Like I said, Dogran's the best one, so it's kind of like, well, do I want Dogran's or do I want Karakoras? Karakoras are probably a bit more all round, but in order for the Karakoras to be effective, my opponent needs to use monster effects. Um, where it's quite fun, like Rise Heart, you activate something, they have to absorb it, and you go, okay, cool, get rid of it um, with the Karakora, and then you'll get advantage off the back of that. But, you know, it really comes down to the matchups, your local environment, whether you go for Kaijus, Karakoras, or whether you want to change it up completely and do it a little bit differently. 
But I really enjoy the theme about this. I'm sad that the deck is expensive for everyone because it would have been really kind of cool um, to have more people play this deck. Unfortunately, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. If you've got a friend that was buying loads of this set because they wanted the Hungry Burger stuff and not the Vanquish Soul stuff, see if you can work out a trade because I definitely feel that if you're a fan of fighting games, um, you're really going to enjoy this. And if you've already got cash, you'll enjoy it. If you're like, you know what, I've, I've got Kaijus, I've been wanting to play Kaiju deck for a while, I can do this. Um, I'm highly, highly um, interested in trying this out in a True King version because you can play Agamazood for the fire, you can play Lithosagam for the earth and then you can play in the one Brastos as water because you just pop the Brastos of anything. That will then give you access to like rank nine plays as well. Different attributes, stronger boss monsters, you name it. Um, also another one that I did consider, whether it works or not, I don't know, is Sword Soul. Just because you've got Long One as a fire, you've got your Vishura as a dark, and then you've got Adhara as an earth, which could be quite funny. Might become more relevant if we do get wind and water because then it's like, yo, let's go. Um, but yeah, just something to look into. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you do have any questions, by all means, please put them in the comments down below. I'm having so much fun playing around with the different variants of this deck. So if you do have any suggestions or any kind of cool spicy options, let me know and I'll be more than happy to look into them. But for now, as absolutely always, stay safe. And of course, happy dueling.